one. Hey, everybody. We are live at the Pay Studio in New York with Jake Shimabukuro. Jake, welcome back, dude. It's great to see you again. Aloha. Thanks for having me back, man. Yeah, yeah of course, awesome. man. And the weather's yeah. beautiful today. It's, it's awesome. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous, man. And every every time this makes sense for you to come back to the studio, please do come back and visit us. Total pleasure to listen to you play. Thank you, man. I love the new setup. It's awesome. Looks yeah, great. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, congratulations to you. I'm going to cut over here to me so the internet can see. You've got uh, Trio is out in the world right now on uh, Music Theory's recordings, and we're about to hear uh, three songs from that, and we're going to hear a bonus fourth. I'm not going to spoil the surprise <laughs> as to what that song is, but uh, we'll okay. hear four songs today. What's coming up first? Uh, so this is, uh, yeah, the album's called Trio, and um, and it was recorded with my buddy uh, Dave Preston on electric guitar and Nolan Werner uh, on electric bass. And um, yeah, I thought I'd do the first track off the record. It's a song called um, When the Masks Come Down. It's kind of a rock-oriented uh, piece. And unfortunately, this is going to be the solo version of a trio song. So we hope, hope you guys in, enjoy this. All right, here's When the Masks Come Down. Thank you. Woo, nice. 
Dude, this is so much fun, man. Your hands are just, are always, as far as the cameras see it, are just a blur on the fretboard, yeah. and you're really going for it, man. It's awesome. Thanks oh, for doing thank this. You. We've got a great crowd on the internet. There's a lot of people on the other side of these oh, screens awesome. who are very happy. Yeah, so. well, aloha, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, man. Thanks for bringing this here. Um, thank you. So we just heard uh, When the Masks Come Down. It's mm -hmm. the first first track off of Trio. Um, it sounded like you had, there was a very, very collaborative way in which this record was was done right i mean a very uh spontaneous sort of way can you talk about that process what it was like when you and nolan and dave got in a room together yeah we just uh, basically what we did was um we rented out a studio in nashville for eight days and uh and it was just so much fun you know we had a uh, rs field who helped co-produce the the record and um and he you know he we did a couple records uh prior and uh and yeah we were just Basically, we went in there with with nothing really prepared. You know, the idea was um, that the three of us have have been playing together. We had been touring as a trio for about two and a half years, and every day at soundcheck when we're on tour, every day at soundcheck we'll start getting into some kind of jam, and then at the end of soundcheck we're like, "Man, that sounded great. We should have recorded that." <laughs> you know, we're just improvising, and we just thought, "Man, we we should uh, just go into the studio." and and do something that just kind of represents those sound checks because my last uh few records that we you know we always had drummers on there because i love drums but in the shows the last two and a half years when we tour we never bring a drummer with us so we thought well we should probably do something that represents the sound that that we have you know when we're on the road and when we're touring as a trio and i think the the sound of the electric bass uh the way dave plays his electric guitar and the acoustic ukulele well acoustic electric ukulele it's such a um it's a unique blend and i i think they just um complement each other so well yeah, I agree wholeheartedly, man. Really appreciate you bringing it here in this arrangement, man. You always sound great when it's, when it's you on, on the... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's lonely when I don't have the other guys with me, but yeah, but it's fun. You know, I, I, I've always, you know, of course, I'm a big fan of the ukulele, you know, so hearing it in, it, in its in its purity like this, you know, just by itself is always uh, fulfilling for me as well. So, yeah. Yeah, man. Well, dude, I'm, I'm enjoying it very, very much from over here. It sounds outstanding. And there's a lot more music coming up. You're going to do uh, three more today. What's happening second? Yeah. So this next one, uh, well, talking about, you know, the, the, the pure sound of the ukulele, this next one is actually a traditional Hawaiian song. And it's the only traditional song on this new record. It's called Wailai. And there's a little backstory about this one because when I was uh, in the late 90s, I was doing a lot of uh, non-traditional music on the ukulele and experimenting a lot. And I was opening up for for uh, some of my favorite Hawaiian musicians, you know, at this hula show. And I, I went up and I played my set and I did a lot of like rock and roll kind of funky stuff with some distortion and wah-wah pedals and all that. And then, uh, and then I sat down and then, you know, and I was just, and then, uh, and the side order band, you know, they went on. And they were one of my, you know, my heroes that I grew up listening to when I was a kid. And they started singing and they opened up their concert with this song called While I. And as soon as they started singing, I mean, I, I just started crying. You know, I was just so moved. And it was at that moment that I realized how important it is to maintain the balance between traditional ukulele music and non-traditional music. So this is a very traditional song. It was, oh, it was also recorded by Israel Kamaka Vivole. You know, he was the, the singer who did that beautiful version of Over the Rainbow with the, with the ukulele and his lovely voice. But uh, this is a song called Wailai.
some some aloha, some aloha vibes there. Nice, wow. thanks, Jake. Thank you. Uh, so this this seems like a good good time to talk about. Um, so since you're obviously very very conscious of balancing um, non traditional sounds and traditional sounds coming out of that instrument, can you talk about some other either other musicians or other artists or really anybody in the world, chefs or beer makers or baseball <laughs> players or whatever who make yeah. uh, non traditional use of uh, of their particular uh, set of tools? Yeah, I mean, the, uh, people who have who have done that, you know, in in their art form. You know, I've always inspired me. I mean, I, I've always, you know, in, in previous interviews, I've talked about people like Bela Fleck, you know, who took the banjo to a completely, uh, I mean, just took it completely out of what what the norm was. Or Chris Thiele, you know, with the mandolin, Victor Wooten with the with the bass, Edgar Meyer, um, you know, non musicians, people like uh, like Bruce Lee, you know, just kind of thinking out of the box of classical, uh, you know, traditional Chinese martial arts, you know, and, and expanding and adapting uh, Muhammad Ali's footwork, you know, and uh, and grappling and jujitsu and all this kind of stuff. You know, he was really like the the godfather of uh, of mixed martial arts. And so like for me, I remember when I was a kid because I was a huge Bruce Lee fan. I just thought like, man, that's brilliant. And I it made me realize that, you know what, all these different genres of music, that's like different forms of martial arts. You know, so I, I realized at a young age that, yeah, I, I should just be open minded and listen to everything and, you know, and like maybe listen to some some jazz and take some of the things that I like or the things that speak to me or take some blues or some rock or some traditional Hawaiian or some classical music, you know, some Japanese folk tunes, whatever it is. And uh, and uh, and just just take all those things and and use it, you know, as a form of self-expression. So. You know, so it's like I, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's uh, that's where I get a lot of my inspiration from. Nice, man. Well, we're stoked to host you in this particular room. I know you uh, have we've I think this is the third session that we've done and but the first in, in this room. Yeah. And those tapes cool. behind you and behind me. I mean, there's a Muddy Waters from 1965. There's Ooh. the last show that the John Coltrane Quintet ever played from Newport in 1966, sitting in front of, you know, Pink Floyd and Fleetwood Mac and Loretta <laughs> Lynn and Iggy Pop, you know, so there's just this wide, wide wow. breadth of musical history yeah. here. So it seems like a particularly relevant and appropriate room to host you in. Yeah, I can feel the vibes the energy you know in the room it's awesome yeah well it's funny you mentioned pink floyd you know a few years ago um i got to work with alan parsons uh and you know he produced dark side of the moon and working with him and hearing all his stories of working with you know the the uh, pink floyd and all that was so inspiring and you know on this uh on this recent album uh we recorded our first pink floyd you know uh, cover and uh, my manager van who's here tonight you know he's always he's a big pink floyd fan so he was always saying hey man you know you should check out this song check out this album and uh, and i remember uh there was a song um you know i didn't realize our, our guitar player dave preston was such a big you know pink floyd fan and i remember one day in the in the studio uh i just i just turned to him i mentioned and i just said hey man do you know that song wish you were here and he's like <laughs> You mean this one? <laughs> and he plays the whole guitar th part, right? I was just like, yeah, 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 that's the one, you know, like five minutes later. But uh, but it was really funny. And we just, uh, yeah, so we we thought, man, let's let's record it. You know, he, I mean, he he knew it already. And, and he's like, man, that guy, Dave Preston, he's like a, he's like an electric orchestra. You know, the way he plays his guitar is so unlike anything I've ever experienced. And that sound in combination with the ukulele to me is just so magical. So, uh yeah, so if, if um, yeah, but you're not going to hear his part right now, but you can hear it on the album. But here's my, uh, my solo interpretation of Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here.
right. Dude, that sounds so good, man. The internet just lost their minds. The comment section is completely <laughs> stoked. So thanks. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. Man, and so as though there weren't enough to be excited about right now with uh with Trio out in the world. Um, it occurs to me that I should have asked you this offline. Can we talk about what's next? Is that public information or did that is let us kibosh that entire yeah. thing? Let's talk about what is happening um, in terms of uh, the road, man. There are, there's a lot of opportunities for people to go see you uh, live. I know Blue Note Hawaii is the next one. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we, um, yeah, I'm heading back home. You know, we just finished a two week uh, tour, you know, just, uh, touring the the new record and it was so much fun man we were i was out with the with the trio actually uh, jackson waldhoff was out with us on bass and dave preston on guitar we had such a blast and even rachel james uh, who sings on she sings one track on this new record she does a, an incredible version of landslide she's one of my favorite singers and she's amazing out of denver and uh so she came out for a few shows too so we really got to you know play the play the the songs the the off the record and um and it was just fun trying to come up with with different new ways of playing it and just how the songs just evolved over the last two weeks has just been incredible so man and we're excited you know i'm going back home uh next week and uh, we got some shows in hawaii we're you know, we're, there's a blue note in Hawaii now, which actually started here in New York. And, right. um, and then we're also doing a show on Maui. And then uh, in April, got some shows on the West Coast, California. And, and you know, just uh, going to we have a whole string of dates again. So uh, we'll be uh, we'll be out uh, playing the new tunes, man. It's been fun. Nice, man. Yeah. Hopefully everybody who's watching this right now gets a chance to see you live. I got the chance. It was year. It was probably like five years ago, four years ago. Maybe I saw you yeah. at the High Line when that still existed oh, here yeah, the High Line. in the That's city. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, we will we'll excitedly stay tuned to uh, JakeShimabukuro.com as new tour dates are announced. Yeah, and thanks, uh, man. yeah, man, hopefully everybody gets a chance to see you as much as much as I love doing this. I mean, I've said this a lot of times, but there is there's no substitute for getting out of your house and seeing live music. You have to do it. As as awesome as this is right now, you got to get up and see it live. It's a total pleasure. Um, dude, thanks again for doing this. And there's uh, there's bonus music. There's a fourth song coming up. What's yeah, happening? Is that What's cool? happening next? Yeah, want, dude, um, dude, play all so, the, you can play all afternoon if you want. <laughs> so yeah, we've been having fun. You know, we've been uh uh the, the last couple years now, we've been throwing this in the set and we've been um we've been actually closing closing the show with it and inviting the audience to sing along. And it's funny because it never started out that way. It was a, just a spontaneous thing. We were in, in Australia doing the Byron Bay Blues Fest. And we were playing, you know, I mean, what, we during our show there, I mean, there were like, you know, I mean, the, the it's a huge festival. So, I mean, there were literally thousands of people, you know, in, in the tent. And I started playing Bohemian Rhapsody. And everyone just, it, it was just this organic thing. Like they just, just a couple people started singing along and, and then more people started to join in. And like two minutes into the song, I mean, the whole crowd under that tent was singing. And it was like the most epic moment. I mean, I was less, you know, I got chills like yeah. playing it. It was just unbelievable. And ever since then, we've we've kind of been, in, you know, we've kind of just mentioned, you know, if you want to sing along, sing along. And people have just been eating it up. And it's it's been great. So uh, so I thought I'd... I'd uh, we, well, we probably won't have the sing along tonight. Well, today, but you know, I thought I'd do the uh, do uh, our my little solo ukulele version of uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, which you know was always one of my favorite classic rock tunes, and and I just think it's such a genius piece of music, you know. So, yeah. All right. So here's Bohemian Rhapsody.
Nice. Jake. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, man. Thank you so much for coming by and doing it. And uh, best of luck on Trio. It's out in the world right now. And uh, so that we heard three songs from it. We heard an epic interpretation of uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Thank you so much. And really, it is, it's a sincere offer. Anytime it makes sense for you to come by, come by again. We'll be here doing this. We'd love to hear you. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Thank you.